Okay, so so here's a few things we'll we'll look at. We'll look at some uh, some of the stuff dealing with uh, magnets. All right. So first of all, a uh, magnet has a north pole and a south pole uh, with its uh, magnetic fields. Uh, north side, conventionally the magnetic field comes out of the north end of the magnet and goes into the south end. Uh, if you look, if you hang a string, uh, if you hang a magnet from a string, a bar magnet, then the north side of the magnet will end up pointing north, uh, like you see over here. So when the magnet stops swinging, it'll act just like a compass, where the north side of the, the magnet points to the north and the south side of the magnet count, uh, points to the south. Now when you're doing experiments in here, you can, you can test and see that north side of one magnet will repel the north side of another magnet and will attract the south side of the other magnet. And likewise, uh, the south side of a magnet will repel the south side of another magnet and attract the north side of that same magnet. So even if you have a magnet and you're not sure uh, which side's north and which side south, you can take uh, this magnet, find out which side of that magnet is attracted uh, to the south side of a magnet. So this would be the north side of this magnet. And you can test that by okay. testing to see if the north side of this magnet is attracted to the opposite side, which would be the south side of that magnet. Let's take a look at this over all right, so here uh, we have a washer that is uh, made of stainless steel, and we have some super magnets here. So when I put this in the magnetic field of those super magnets, uh, the super magnets will suspend this. Right? The string keeps it from being pulled upward. Uh, you can see that uh, even when I place things like cardboard or uh, aluminum uh, through this magnetic field. It doesn't disrupt the magnetic field. But if I take uh, iron, so this is aluminum and this is iron. If I take iron and I place iron into that uh, magnetic field, it will disrupt the magnetic field that's in there uh, and will end up breaking or weakening the magnetic field by producing another magnetic field around this ring. So you can see just by getting this close that when this piece of iron gets in the magnetic field, it creates its own magnetic field and will cause this one to drop. So if I take a magnet and I have an iron nail, I can induce the magnetic domains within this nail to create magnetic fields and you can see this because I can start picking up little pieces of uh, stainless steel as if uh, there was a magnet there. Now, in the same sense, if I, if I break this magnetic field here, I lose the induced magnetic field, it becomes greatly weaker, right? If I leave this attached long enough, the magnetic domains will reorient to make this into a weak magnet and the longer you leave it, the greater the magnetic field will be in the iron nail. So you can see, oh, almost there. All right, you can see that you can get a weak magnetic field within any iron uh, nail simply by leaving it in a magnetic domain for a long period of time. That magnetic field causes the electrons to reorient and the magnetic domains to reorient and creates uh, a weak magnet. Which, if I was to hang this from a string, this nail head could also uh, be used just like a compass or just like uh, we have here where the north head of the, of the nail hanging from a string will start pointing north and the south pole of this weak magnet will hang south. So this can become a, a, a compass also, simply by creating a weak uh, magnetic field within it. All right. 
You can you can test the strength of magnets by um, seeing how close together you can place them uh, before they push one on the other. So here I have. Can you zoom in on those numbers? I'll place this at 120 millimeters, and we'll see how close this guy comes when it starts to push. So you can see here's our distance. There's our distance, which is approximately uh, 100 to 135. So we have approximately 35 millimeters uh, in between that allows this magnetic force to push it. You can also test to see um, how close they can be to attract each other. This is a greater, so we'll put this on 35. Yeah, we'll put this at 100 and see. All right, so here's an attraction here. 35. We'll get slowly, slowly. So we can see how close they get. And you can see that uh, we have an inverse square law that the closer these get, uh, the stronger the uh, magnetic force is. Uh, and that follows the inverse square law, just like our uh, charges, our Coulomb's charges. All right, so uh, you can you can trace the magnetic field. There's two ways you can do that. You can place iron filings all around all around the magnet, or if you place tiny little compasses all around nice magnet as close as possible and on there. So with the smallest ones closest. By doing this, you see a, a general curve uh, where you have the magnetic field goes from the North Pole and then rotates in and comes back on the South Pole, or right, coming across like this, and it comes this way too. You see the same uh, general direction taking place here, right? So if you put iron filings, if I place iron filings over this magnet, you should see uh, generally the same. All right. So you can see the magnetic field around this is illustrated by the compass directions uh, taking place. And you see this uh, leaving the north uh, pole of the magnet coming into the south pole and leaving the north pole and coming into the south pole here. You can see that generally uh, what's going to happen here is that the blue uh, is repulsed, the blue side is repulsed, or the red side is repulsed by the north pole of the magnet and attracted to the um, south side of the magnet. These can reverse polarity in these cheap compasses, so sometimes it doesn't work, but overall you can see it should work that way. If we place a piece of cardboard and uh, we place down a piece of paper, over this magnet, we should see the same general outline from our iron filings. So we should see exactly where the magnet is and the magnetic field around the magnet. So we sprinkle this in real light, and then we give it a tap. 
And you could see, here's our magnet in the middle, and here's our magnetic field coming out and around, right around the sides. You can see the same thing that was going on with those compass needles. So I can take this off, and you can look underneath, and you can see that our magnetic field is also illustrated uh, by the iron filings the same way it is around a magnet. Now, what we could do is we could, we could take, uh, we could move this magnet over, and then we could take a north and a south, and we could look at, let's move this over even more, put a couple in between, and take a north and a south, and you could see that we have uh, an attraction between the two. I can move this on. In the same sense, I can put some iron filings. You can see here's the south pole of one magnet and north, so the opposites have an attraction. So you can see this bending, circular motion where these uh, magnetic fields are attracted to one another. We can take this and we could spin it around and we can push this in here and now something interesting takes place. You see, oops. if you do this, so we have south and south pole. Here's the magnets up here and you see that it pushes outward from the center so these these magnetic fields oppose each other and they push against each other and you can see them bending the magnetic fields um, interfering with each other and pushing each other away just like we saw with uh, positive and negative charges when we had the same uh, negative and negative charges they would repel each other or push on each other and positive and negative would attract each other